في جولتي في ايرلندا الشماليه لفت انتباهي الرسومات والفن التشكيلي اللي كان موجود على الحيطان في مدينه بلفاست اهلا وسهلا انها جولات وكلات ميكو وجولات وكلات بس النهارده الجولات جولات فنيه ليه لان انتوا عارفيني فنان وبحب الرسم والتاريخ و... وفرعنا وكده بس النهارده انا في حته مهمه ايرلندا الشماليه والحيطان بتحكي تاريخ عشان كده رحت انا وتريسي المرشده السياحيه نقابل جون الرسام اللي شارك في معظم الرسومات دي يحكي لنا عن القصص اللي وراها هاي جون هاو نايس ورك باي ذا واي اف جوت تو ستارت ويز نو بروبلم هاو يو دوين توداي ذس از ستيل بارت اوف يور دروين از ويل يا ذس از ا بارت اوف ذا بي سبيشلز يو نو ذا اوستر سبيشال كونسبلي they were formed in 1920 you know they were here to defend the protestants from attacks by the ira you know during in troubles you know so this is one of the older uh, british regiments you know so how long you been like doing all of this art uh, i've been painting this for over 25 years now and i continue to paint it you know every year 25 you know. years you've been doing this yeah 25 years that's why it's so perfect yeah when probably, i look yeah. it's so perfect yeah and this is not just a normal art is it it says history yeah yeah it's history about the community and uh, the conflict you know and our background So this is the Protestant side. Yeah. And that uh, uh, like if I'm coming here and I've seen the street art, I would know straight away I'm in the Protestant area. Here in the Protestant area. Yeah. By the views and everything in that. Yeah. So um, yeah. So all of these walls is yours. Yeah, yeah, all the artwork. Okay. You draw all, you draw yeah. everything here. Yeah, it's been here for uh, 25 years now. Is it in order from there to here? Yeah, well the first mural is about the Ulster Young Mountains. They were formed in 1970. Being like a, a vigilante, you know, groups on the streets to defend Protestants mm. from uh, Catholics and IRA attacking the houses, you know. So then the second mural here is about the Ulster Defence Association, you know. They were formed in 1970, the 74, you know, as a paramilitary group to defend Ulster, you know, and the same, you know, from IRA attacks, you know, and the group still remains today, you know. So the Ulster really, it's the Protestant of Northern Ireland. Yeah. We call them Ulster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long have you been an artist? Which um, is the wrong question to ask. I have been an artist for maybe 25 years, yeah. Yeah. And fine art and murals, you know. Mostly I started mural painting, you know, when I was the age of uh, 16, 17, you know, painting all around Belfast, you know, not just here. No way. You know, South Belfast, you know, um, places like, you know, uh, Antrim, Carrick, Fergus, Bangor, you know, <coughs> painting all, you know, started painting oh, no. all around Northern Ireland, you know. Uh, so. So what? I started getting involved in all this, you know. South Belfast, maybe yeah. West Belfast, you know. And what did you want from drawing this? What did you want the people to see? What? Yeah, well, you, because there's so many messages here. Yeah, you know, this mural it's to show you the change in the, the community and. Uh, the country you know going from the past till the future you know you know brighter life you know this is darker side of the troubles you know showing you know like you know place you know the press square you know children around a you know like a vans been hijacked this here is like paramilitary you know marching in the 1970s with a you know the old hats on yeah and storm and you know this is a prison in the background like bob wire you know Uh, showing you all the, the dark side of you know that's the dark side yeah and Now the dark side after the earth and universe and yeah, like different people's... colors of hand yeah. unity everybody together for peace yeah for, for peace. a better world in belfast yeah wow. so and we, 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 we tell them this is belfast yeah yeah unity and diversity yeah and welcome to belfast it's showing you a, a better future for our children you know you know maybe like this is a uh, college you know yeah queen's university you know people to play football uh, you know Activity. employment you know and the dove of course you know the peace peace yeah. dove for peace you know yep. people want better culture empowerment human rights you know yeah, equality the you know and any of the koreans are you know the, the symbol of uh, belfast طبعا 
ما فيش مكان احسن من هنا نتقابل انا والست فيه تريسي الرحله ما خلصتش ورحله ايرلندا لسه بادئه نو... ايرلندا الشماليه لسه بادئه وتريسي هنا واخداني المكان مهم وازاي التاريخ بيحكي على الحيطه منهم حتى مش بس جوه بريطانيا لا بره بريطانيا وده احسن مكان صح ولا تريسي Now you're in your part. I'm in my part. Yep, yep. Finally, yep. I belong in Northern yeah. Ireland. You know what I mean? Welcome to Northern Ireland. Wow. Welcome to Northern Ireland. This yeah. is amazing. Is that being drawn by Irish people? Um, this has been drawn by by the people of this area, um, and these murals really um, signify kind of their outlook on society and on the way things are today. So this is all about public expression. Um, so yes, these are these are from this area. They both have the same feeling, same pain. That's it. And same siege. Yeah, They, exactly. Okay. And from the both different side of the world, they're trying to unite. Yeah. I feel your pain, you feel mine, and all That's of it. this. They have both been. They have both been persecuted and you know kept down. And um, Irish people are are just have an affinity, if you like, with other people who are going through the same. For the same thing, you know. This is amazing. Yeah, I'm impressed that they've written this in Arabic. I, I, I mean, me when I saw it, I said, "Oh my God, no! That it's written in Arabic now." How do you guys feel when you see this? What's that in the history for you? Um, well, for me, it just it, it gives me a warm feeling because I just think that we have a sympathy and an empathy with with people who have been going through the same. We do reach out to other people. We are we are definitely a very warm race of people, um, and there are Irish people all over the world. And, and you all are artists, by the way. <laughs> everywhere in the world, we're, everywhere in the city. Well, I think we're known for other things other than art, but art wouldn't be one of them, I suppose. You know, I heard about. Here, street art, but I didn't know that there is a lot of Palestinian. Yeah, a lot, a yeah. lot. There... So I've seen it in many places. Why is that? Um, because um, only it... Palestinians. In yeah, Muslim. well, and Palestinians were were persecuted as well, um, and they had, I suppose, that gave them a link with the Irish people as well because they had that in common. Um, they were the underdog. They were very much, um, you know, they were they were put in, imprisoned. Um, and for that reason, there is there will always be a very strong link, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. You know, I know my, my friend does a lot of work in Palestine as well, and it's, you know... It's, it's good, to, at least, to bring people together. And because we want peace everywhere, we have to understand each other, we have to understand other people. Pain. You, have your, you guys have your newspaper on the wall. Well, that's, you yeah, I mean? yeah. Somebody has taken a long time to, to do all of this, and it just shows you how important it is to the people of this area that they, they do these, they keep them, keep them up, keep them, and so on, keep them fresh, you know? There is many places I've been with which you guys have street arts, and mainly it's about history or... That's right. It's mainly, and it's it's an expression of the way people feel today as well. Um, there are current things on these walls, so it's not all about just the history or the Easter Rising, or which is its centenary is this year, um, and the split between England and Ireland. Other places that are talking about climate change and climate change was not there in. Well, this is it. You know? This is exactly so, it. So yeah. Exactly, is you your know? expression on your wall. Yeah. You guys are very Egyptians. I have to say it again, but. You really are. Oh, well. Because Egyptians, they kind of exposed all their life on the wall. From every matter. Oh, right, okay. So that's why I'm saying, like, you guys like Egyptians. We have a lot in common then. We have yeah, a lot. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with yesterday's tour, and I'm happy with today's tour. What's next? What is next is we're going to do something very different and go back to nature. Wow. Uh, nature that with a footy link to it and we're going to um, examine and meet someone who is a specialist in the world of seaweed. And there are loads of different types of seaweed, especially around Strangford Lock. Um, and we're going to eat some of the seaweed. Wow. So there you go. Wow, <laughs> That's wow, your wow. lunch. That's your lunch shorted. To be honest, lunch and food 
and nature sounds a lot better to me than history and politics. I, I totally like agree. Let's I go. couldn't agree more, Michael. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. go. We'll leave See these you later. People. We Bye. don't want these people. <laughs>
And after 30 years, I'm here next to an expert, and we're gonna eat from the floor. Good. So tell me, is that not dangerous? No, no, no. Only if you're close to, you know, dirty water coming from a river or from a sewage outlet, you know, if there's a big town nearby. But here, this is a very protected area and the water's very clean, so it's no problem. You might want to rinse it, you know, wash, wash yeah. it with a bit of water because it's, it's maybe got silt on it or something, you know. But can we eat it like this now? Um, you could try it, yeah. I mean, you're best to use scissors for cutting seaweed because they are like plants, they are sort of rooted on the rock, so you know, you cut it like that, and yeah. you've just got bits. But I mean, you can taste that, it's quite quite tough, it's quite rubbery, but that's the best. The best way to eat that is like cut it into cut it. a stir fry. Ah, oh, okay, stir fry. Well, it's okay, it tastes okay. Mm, that's not bad. Yeah, that's called channel rack. And it's it it grows at the top of this at at the top of the tide, so it's you know it's always at the, the first seaweed that you come across when you walk near down. the shore. Yeah, so you'll nearly always get it because it's rarely covered by water. This seaweed isn't isn't one that you would normally eat, although you can you can eat it. What you would do with this is you would maybe um, dry it, dry it fast, and and then powder it. You know, grind it up in a yeah. pestle and mortar and powder it and add it into your your stews or your soups or something like that, or sprinkle it over your food, so that it gives that lovely salty, salty. umami sort of flavor, you know? So that's that's how you would use this, because you can't, you know, you just can't eat it, it's just too just rough, sad. tough. Uh, but it but it, it still tastes much like the other ones once you have all that flavor, you know? But the other thing about this sort of seaweed is that people would put this into a, a bath, and they would, you would sit in it and soak in it, you know, you just get, you know, you just get big Some handfuls of, this, yeah. of it like this. I mean, there's lots of it, you know. Yeah. So you just get a bath, you have a bath and you fill it with warm water and, and then you soak, you soak in it, you know, and it's just uh, brilliant. It does wonders for your skin and your complexion and your... <laughs> so it's very, it's, it's very nice you for could, you. You could use it for food and you could use it for spa reasons. Of course, yeah. Beauty stuff. Of course, yeah. And often when you, when you look around in here as well, you sometimes find, um, you know, shells that you can eat if you, if you search. Like crap? Um, little, like snails, like these little snails. Oh, okay. See these here? We can eat, and yeah. You can eat those, you boil them, and then you take them out. Who discovered that we can eat all of this stuff? <clears throat> oh, well, I mean, a long, long time a ago. Long, long time ago. Yeah. Because honestly, whoever complained about there is not enough variety of food, you can I come know, to the sea. I know, yeah. There is so... And I, so lots of things hide underneath the hide underneath the seaweed. Not I very much here. I can see a lot of snails here. Yeah, well, those sort of snails, now that's, that's, that's a dead shell, but there's one. I think that's a live one there. And that's a live one. Yeah, that's there. a live one, yeah. So they're very that's a very good size. Obviously so what you do is you put that into boiling water and then you have a pin and then you pull it out. So yeah. it's like a scargo. Yeah. So it's quite quite rubbery and tough, but it tastes good. It's really yeah. good. I've tried so it. So they're before. very good ones, yeah. Yeah. So that's a good old one, that one. They say it's got an old scar on its skin, but that's about maybe four or five years old. That one there's a youngster. Young one. So that's plenty of food. It's plenty of food, you know, yeah. and snacks as well. Yeah, and the tide is only just going out, like it's not it's not full tide yet. When the tide goes away down, you'll get more stuff. Okay. You know? okay. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> nice. You like your food? Yeah, very. Well, that's one thing, and that's why I want to deliver this message to people. Anything, try something new. Oh, yeah. It's good for you. Yeah. It's just not as commercial as the other stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, I don't live off this. I mean, I'll pick that maybe when I feel I would like some. You know, mm. I, don't, I don't have to eat it. I mean, I can go to the shop and buy stuff, you know. Of course. But it's just, it just adds to your life. It adds variety to your life. And I mean, this sort of thing is very good for you. It's very good for your system. It's very good. So a lot of, a lot of the Nile wild natural things. There's no additives. There's nothing like that. There's no chemicals put into it. So it, it's going to do you good. And uh -huh. no, do you know. wonders actually? Because, to be honest, for me, I love salty food. Yeah. And that just I don't need to put salt anymore. And Life it's, is good. It's good salt. Like it's not. Chemical it's good salt. salt yeah, yeah, it's not chemical salt. Yeah, it's not yeah. processed. It's from there. 
and straight up there for you to eat it. And there's one, there's one seaweed as well, as well called pepper dulse, and it actually tastes like it has salt and pepper. It's no. amazing, it's quite hot, you know. You, you, do you have it? No, do you get Good. it on... I'm very happy now. If you go to Rathlin Island, you might find some there, but... Because I, I hate spicy food. Uh -huh. I don't tell anybody. <laughs> Nobody knows yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. This is secret information. Yeah. Please. Okay. <laughs> this one here is called Sea Purslane. And it's a bit like the seaweeds in that it is quite salty as well, but much less salty than the seaweed. But those leaves are quite fleshy and they're quite succulent, so there's quite a lot of body in them, you know. There's, wow. There. So that would be good to maybe nice. quickly blanch, like with a bit of water. You know, just, just citrusy, Almost, has some yeah. citrus and salty as well. Yeah. So it's a perfect combination for me, salt and lemon. Yeah, good. Well, I would, I would take that. I mean, I would collect, you know, just, just a whole pile of leaves like that, yeah. and I would put it into a, a pan with boiling water for just maybe two minutes, just enough to soften, just to wilt it, a bit like cooking spinach. Yeah. And a bit of butter, and that's that's it. Then you that's, just drain the water off. That's that. And the same with this one here. This is called orich. And is that edible as well? It is. Yes, yeah, the same. It's not as good, but it's, it's, it's okay. You know, it's fine. And. But I mean, it's, you don't have to go and buy spinach. You can just eat this sort of thing, you know. So I don't need papaya no more? No, no. I can be my own papaya? You can, yeah. But I really like this one. Which one? This one. The, I, I, this one. I like this one because it has more texture and, yeah. and it's double the size. And if you the, go to the next county, you'll find none because this is probably the most northerly point in Ireland that it grows. It likes further south. Okay. So this is just at the very edge of its range. And then oh. further north, it's After too cold. Yeah. So there you are. So we're lucky. Yeah. Would you say that like foraging, sea foraging, seaweed yeah. foraging yeah. is the safest foraging anybody can do? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's 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 just learning how to use the seaweed, you know. The, the None of them would use your common you, sense. I mean, like that that looks edible. Like it looks like it's it's easy to eat. Like it's not too harsh. It's not too rubbery or anything. You know, you know that that's going to be pretty okay. And you can you can tr the thing about seaweed is you can always try it. You know. Yeah. You can try it because it's none of it's poisonous. Uh, you could go down there and try that seaweed and if it's too tough you wouldn't bother or you'd maybe try something else. But it's not, there aren't too many different types anyway so it's not too difficult to learn. So do you think the people from this castle would have came for you to the sea? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean they would have eaten fish. Like they would have collected fish from the sea, and they would have had shellfish. They would have had they would they would have had people to do that. Yeah. I mean, they would have eaten shellfish, and they would have eaten the but seaweed. This is a very and small castle, by the way. Oh yeah, but it's. I mean, that was a like that would have been a, a like a fortress, or it would have been for the military, or would yeah, have been just for, the, for the for the for the, the the big man in the area. You know, okay. I mean, everybody else would I have been living in the huts and small little places and there was an, in a, a way over there there was a monastery as well there was a big monastery of monks and they mm -hmm. had a they had a fish trap thing developed I mean that was about maybe they had it maybe about what about 1500 years ago I can't tell you how much I enjoyed the seaweed oh, good and the <laughs> idea of it yeah well you and can I, keep that you can keep that I swear I swear yeah. this is one of the nicest share it with your friends not really <laughs> But one of the nicest presents I had, especially because I put a lot of salt yeah. in my food. And this yeah. is an advice for everybody who's watching us now. Guys, if you have so much salt, like me, you love your salt so much, don't put chemical salt. You see weed, it will salt in your food yeah. and it will make you happy yeah. and it will make you healthy and it will make you at 62. <laughs> wearing nice glasses, have a lovely white beard and look good looking like this man next to me. Look how good looking he is. Guys, they don't know. <laughs> See ya! <laughs>